Welcome to our online. Now here we have a very special case where we're trying to rationalize the denominator. Notice in the denominator instead of square roots we have cube roots and so therefore we need to handle them very special. Now notice that we have the cube root of a plus the cube root of b. And then we go over here something we've learned a while ago that if we see something like this a cubed plus b cubed is equal to a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared or a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this denominator and make it look like this or like this. And so essentially this here is the same what we have over here. This is the cube root of this and this is the cube root of, oh, this is a square that should be a cube. All right, so again, notice that this is the cube root of this and this is the cube root of that. So essentially, if we take this and we want to write this as a, a plus b, which is essentially the cube of the cube root of a plus the cube of the cube root of b, then all we have to do is multiplying it times this. And so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this times the denominator that is essentially this. So we have a squared, well that means we need the cube root of a squared minus a times b minus the cube root of a times the cube root of b and then we have plus b squared would be plus the cube root and I should write the cube root and the cube root of in this case that would be b squared. There we go. That when we multiply this times this, we'll end up with a plus b in the denominator. Of course, we need to multiply with exactly the same thing in the numerator. So we multiply this times three times the cube root of a squared minus the cube root of a times b. We can write it like that, plus the cube root of b squared. And let me write this a little bit better. So we have a times b like that. Okay, that will do the trick. So, to show why that works, we'll show it in just a moment. So this is five times, in the numerator we have the cube root of a squared minus the cube root of a times b and plus the cube root of b squared. Now in the denominator we're simply going to multiply it out so you can see what that's going to look like. Eventually it'll be a plus b in the denominator. But what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these two terms by those three terms, so we end up with six terms in the denominator when we multiply these together. So first, the cube root of a times the cube root of a squared, that gives us the cube root of a cubed, which is simply a. Let me write it out so we can simplify it later. So it would be the cube root, the cube root of a cubed. So this times this, that gives us a minus cube root of a times a, which is a squared times b. This term times this term, that gives us plus the cube root of a times b squared. Then this term times this term would be plus the cube root of b times a squared. This term times this term gives us minus the cube root of a times b squared. And finally this term times this term gives us plus the cube root of b cubed. All right. Now let's see what our denominator looks like. First of all, this will become an a and that will become a b. But here, notice, and let me get a red pen, we have a minus cube root of a squared plus b and we have plus, here that's a plus, a squared times b inside the cube root. That means that this term cancels out this term. They're the same. And then the cube root of a b squared minus the cube root of a b squared this term cancels out this term, which means we're just left with the first and the last term, which is clearly simply a plus b, which means that this whole thing can now be written as five times the cube root of a squared minus the cube root of a times b plus the cube root of b squared, all divided by simply a plus b. And that's how we rationalize the denominator in case we're dealing with cube roots in the denominator rather than square roots. It's a little bit more complicated, but notice if we simply recognize that this is simply equal to this, and if it has a negative sign, then this would simply be equal to this. And so we have to multiply either times this or times that to get rid of that 
radical in the denominator, and that is how it's done.